Welcome to part one of this Football Manager 2016 Wonder Kid experiment where today I will be looking at a couple of Portuguese Wonder Kids. So we will be having a look at the Monaco Wonder Kid Bernardo Silva who already has one cap for Portugal and we'll be having a look at Ruben Neves the Porto central midfielder who is tipped to be a star player in the future. Both of them are tipped to, for big things and could turn into world-class players on this game. So just like in my other Wonder Kid experiments, I've already done Udgaard, Raheem Sterling and Christopher Ayer. I'm going to holiday a number of years. In this part one, we'll holiday about six or seven years. And then in part two, I will holiday until the end of their career. So Ruben Nevis is 18 and Bernardo Silva is a couple years older. So there's not a huge amount of difference in that age. So hopefully they'll be retiring around the same point on the game. So at the start of the game, you can see Neves here is a defensive midfielder or central midfielder playing for Porto. He's worth 7.75 million and has a couple years left on his contract worth 5.75k a week. Hasn't been capped by the Portuguese full team yet, but has six under 21 caps and one goal. Looks a decent all-round player here. Pretty good at most things. And next up, we have Bernardo Silva, who like I said already, has a cap for Portugal. He's 14 under 21 caps and six goals as well. He's worth 14 million and earn, uh, earning 14.5k a week until 2020. He's started at Benfica and was purchased for 11.25 million. So it'll be interesting to see if he if he stays at, at Monaco or moves on to a, a different team straight away. Obviously, Monaco have a lot of money. so And he'll be playing um, Champions League football, I guess, with them as well. Uh, whereas Ruben Neves could stay at Porto for a few a few years and develop and then move on to maybe the Premier League or La Liga. We'll find out. So let's hold a, holiday a couple of years and see how they're getting on in their careers so far. As always, please hit that like button if you're enjoying these FM16 Wonder Kid experiments. And uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel as well. Maybe check out my other experiments that I've done so far. Anyhow, it's 2017 now. Bernardo Silva is 22 years old and he's got six goals in 18 games for Portugal. Pretty good goals to games ratio there. One every three games for the attacking midfielder. He looks an exceptional talent. Things have certainly gone up for him. He's got 19 on dribbling, vision 17, passing 17. He's a really, really good player. And he's worth £38 million now and earning 59 k a week. So how has he got on? in his first two years of this save. So the first season with Monaco, managed to score 24 goals in 49 games in all competitions. 8.12 average rating. That is crazy high. And this season just gone 21 goals in 39 games in all competitions. And he's improved on that. 8.14 average rating. That is unbelievable. So what's he done with uh, Monaco so far and Portugal? So with Portugal, uh, European Under-21 Championship runners-up in 2015, scored his first international goal in 2015. Euro Cup winners with Monaco. They defeated, let's have a look, Barcelona won it this year against Schalke. Monaco beat um, Leverkusen last year, so that's a good achievement. Then he was runners-up in the Olympic Games with the Portugal Under-23s under 23 team. I don't know if Monaco, I, I can't remember if I've loaded League One in this save to be honest. Don't think I have. No, I haven't. So PSG have won the league both times. Monaco did finish third this season, but we'll certainly be looking to try and get ahead of PSG on this save. Now, this is the same save as the 2045 save download video that I did. So you may already know the outcome of the French league. I think PSG do dominate on this save, but we'll see where Bernardo Silva moves in terms of clubs, I guess. So you can see here he's won a few things. He's won the Player of the Year award at Monaco and won the European Golden Boy in 2016. That really is a very big achievement uh, for him. And um, we've got the likes of Goetze, Isco, Pogba and Sterling winning it, in, winning it in recent years. But Bernardo Silva added to that list. That's fantastic to see. Can he go on and win World Player of the Year? Next up is Ruben Neveson. He's now 20 years old, but he hasn't managed to win uh, a full cap for Portugal just yet. Certainly has improved. He's a very good all-rounded midfielder. You can see he's worth £21 million now, so that's good. Has been playing quite a few teams uh, games in the in the B team, though, for Porto recently, although he has put in plenty of performances for the first team, as you can see there, and a couple of goals each year. But let's hope he can 
improve beyond this. He, he needs to improve beyond this to compete with Bernardo Silva. So it's now 2020, three years ahead of the last update. Let's have a look at Ruben first then. So he's 23 years old now, but he hasn't been capped by the Portuguese full team. He's got 35 under 21 caps and 3 under 21 goals. I guess that's how he's finished. You can see Bernardo Silva's the second best Portuguese player at the moment. Portugal are 15th in the world rankings. Let's have a quick look at what they've managed to achieve recently. World Cup wise, we haven't. Uh, they didn't even make it to the 2018 World Cup by the looks of it because they're not actually listed there. 2018 doesn't exist. European Championships though, they in 2016 they lost to England in the second round and this year it hasn't quite uh, gone ahead yet so we'll see the result of the 2021 very soon but yeah it's troubling times for Ruben not getting into the full Portuguese team at the age of 23 you'd expect him to have got a, a cap or two by now he is an exceptional player though as you can see he's worth 43 million pounds it's surely a moment of uh, like you know just around the corner for him to break into the Portuguese first team He's still at Porto, and in the last three years, he's gone from strength to strength, playing a lot more games. You can see there, 43 games in all competitions three seasons ago, 40 two seasons ago, and this year, managed to get 40 appearances under his belt. Good average racing as well, 7.35, that's very strong. Achievements-wise, then, how, what has he managed to get with Porto? You can see there, he has won the Champions League in the last three years. So he's been runners-up in two Portuguese international competitions before winning the Champions League with Porto, which is a fantastic achievement. As you can see, you may remember from the 2045 save video I did that Porto and Benfica and Sporting as well dominated European competitions for many years. We've, we're going to see, if Ruben stays here at Porto, he's going to win a lot of European competitions, I, can, I must say. So he's already won the Champions League. Benfica won it the year after. And they've also been runners-up as well. So you can see the Portuguese dominance already starting to begin at this point. So he's won the Champions League, they won the Super Cup, and then they won the Club World Championship, which is great to see. So he's, he's certainly got a lot of competitions under his belt already. I haven't loaded the Portuguese League, but I think they've probably won the league. In fact, they've only they, he's won it twice so far. So Benfica and Porto sharing it around, as you can see there. Uh, but Benfica slightly more dominant at the moment very interesting stuff going on let's look at his awards then he won the golden ball award at the under 20 world cup that's quite interesting but that's that's it for now let's move on to bernardo silva then and see how he's getting on at club level still at monaco 25 years old now 12 goals in 43 games for portugal that's quite good it looks at it, still a very, very good player, as you'd expect. He's worth £46 million, which is only slightly more than Ruben Neves, I think. Earning 175 k a week, though, which is a lot of money. But Monaco can, can afford that, remember. And he also has a very impressive record. 21 goals last uh, three seasons ago, 20 assists as well, 8.13 average rating, then 12 goals. 14 assists and a 7.72 average rating. And the season just gone, 15 goals in 30 appearances overall. Uh, 10 assists and an 8.05 average rating overall. Look at that average rating overall for all of the seasons though. Very impressive. He's doing exceptionally well in his career with Monaco. But is he going to move on? Is he just going to stay here for his entire career? It's rather strange. He's won, uh, they've been runners up in the Champions League and the Euro Cup. So uh, we actually saw Porto beat Monaco in that final between Ruben and Bernardo Silva. So he's already got one up on Bernardo Silva. Although Bernardo Silva, despite not winning as much at club level, is doing better at a personal level, already winning the Golden Boy Award. And he was runners up in the Euro Cup as well in 2019 losing to uh, to sporting another portuguese team i said the portuguese teams were going to dominate on this save quite interesting i must say so these are all his personal awards he's been he was best player third place in europe that's really good messi was top then de bruyne then bernardo silva so he's obviously having a very good career personally so far which is fantastic to see 
um, him doing. Now, he's been named in the Champions League Dream Team, a Portuguese best 11, player, player of the year for Monaco once again. He was actually shortlisted for the World Golden Ball in 2019. So he's doing really, really well so far. So we're going to end part one today in 2022, just before the World Cup. And as you can see, Bernardo Silva is now 27 years old and he's got 25 goals in 64 games for Portugal, doing very well internationally. He's now worth 48 million, still earning 175k a week at Monaco. He's got four years left on his contract. He may actually just stay at Monaco for this game. But it's not affecting him personally. He's winning lots of awards personally. But achievements-wise, in terms of club level, maybe not quite as high as he would hope. So over the last two years, last year, 27 goals in 42 games in all competitions. 8.41 average rating. 8.5 average rating in the league. And then this year, 20 goals in all competitions in 41 games. 14 assists, 14 man of the matches. 8.31 average rating. 8.42 in the league. He is going from strength to strength, having an incredible career. Competitions-wise, they haven't won anything recently. We'll have a quick look to see if they've managed to win anything domestically, as we don't have it loaded, so it doesn't show. But they've been runners-up the last five years, which is pretty crazy. Just going to go down. So that's the French National League. I want, I want to look for the cup. So I assume that's below here. Here we go. So he's managed to win the cup once, but PSG have dominated this competition as well. They've been runners-up three times, which is pretty unfortunate. The Coupe de la Ligue, they've been runners-up four times as well. Louis Enrique is their manager. Bernardo Silva, as you would expect, is their key player. They've got Courtois in the team. That's, that's interesting. Wow. Goals-wise, um, he is top scorer from the players at the club. That's someone else on loan. So, really doing very well indeed. Let's look at his personal achievements then. Awards-wise, what has he done? Best player in Europe. He's won it. That's fantastic. Uh, beating Eden Hazard and De Bruyne this year. That's great to see. That is really good to see. And he won the World Golden Ball in 2021 at the age of 27 he's beaten a 34 year old Messi and a 33 year old one matter because of that average rating basically what a player he is he got the most goals out of those three players as well not as many assists as Messi and matter but wow what a player he's one world player of the year two years in a row the 2020 world player of the year and the 2021 player world player of the year this is amazing what a, a brilliant achievement for Bernardo Silva at the age of 26 and 27, winning World Player of the Year ahead of Pogba and Messi and then ahead of Mata and Philippe Anderson, another Monaco player, by the way. So the fact that he's playing for Monaco and they're not, I mean, you know, they're doing well in Europe, they're doing well in the uh, in Ligue 1, but he's not winning a huge amount at club level, but at a personal level, he is remarkable. He really is doing very well, and he's he's obviously winning more personal awards than Ruben Neves. But let's see how he's getting on, Ruben, at Porto. He's now managed to get two caps for Portugal, which is great to see. He is an exceptional player, looking at him. I, I don't understand how he's only got two caps for, for Portugal, to be honest. But let's see how they've done at the most recent competitions. A World Cup which is coming up, but European Championship, they they did actually lose. Wait, what's this one? Yeah, the semi-final they lost against Austria. Um, Holland went on to win the 2020 European Championship. But yeah, Portugal a bit unlucky not to, to get through to the final, I guess. Let's just look at the semi-final. They lost 4-1 against Austria. Not a great game for them. Let's see how our guys did. I don't think Ruben played it. In fact, where where is uh, Bernardo Silva? Was he not in the team? He may have been injured, of his, of course. So that may have been a bit of a blow to them, to their chances. But that's interesting that uh, Ruben's now managed to get two counts, but isn't a mainstay in the team, unfortunately. He's, he is on the list, though. If you look down here, he's on the list of top players. So maybe he's just broken onto that list. Let's see how he's doing for Porto, then. So you can see here, he hasn't won anything with Porto in Europe since... 2018 but we'll have a look at the Portuguese Premier League they've won the last three league titles and if we go down to the cup they've won one and been runners up the last four times to Benfica having an exceptional 
time. The League Cup, they have won a couple of, of three times on the save, but once again, Benfica are dominating. Wow, Benfica looks strong, but as do Porto, and maybe maybe both these players are going to stay at the same club the whole time. This is the uh, Porto team. You can see Abu Baker banging in the goals for Porto. Um, I just wanted to have a look at Nevis's recent sort of average ratings and how he's performing at club level for you before we end the episode. So he's he's not really a goal scorer. You can see that only 19 goals in, uh, throughout his career so far, but gets quite a few assists. 10 last season and then this season he got 11 and his average rating's pretty good as well so both our players Bernardo Silva and Ruben Neves doing very well uh, Ruben has won, won the Champions League which is very good obviously and Bernardo Silva is doing pretty well um, in European terms with Monaco they've been runners up in the Champions League and the Euro Cup haven't quite managed to break the, the PSG dominance in the league but they might do it at some point. But he has, remember, won World Player of the Year twice, World Golden Ball once, and also a European Player of the Year as well. So he's, on a personal level, doing very well. So thank you for watching this part one. In part two, we'll be holidaying through to the end of both of these players' career. How many World Player of the Years will Bernardo Silva be able to win? And can Ruben catch him? Can he feature in that list? We will find out in part two. Please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new, the, new to the channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.